Hey everybody, what's going on? Hope you guys are doing good. I'm doing just great. Hope you guys are enjoying your weekend. I know I'm going to be enjoying mine, working on guitars. So have you ever had a project that kind of kicked you in the ass a little bit too much? No matter what you did or how you did it, you just came across problems knowingly that you were doing it the right way. So mine is called The Devilin. This will be the third time that I am going to refinish The Devilin guitar. So what? The first time I had issues where the striping wasn't sharp enough, didn't look right, I didn't like the way it came out, and I ended up redoing it. Not a big deal, okay? Sometimes that shit happens, and there's really no easy fix but stripping it down and starting from scratch or stripping it down to the next level of paint and restarting from there, which can be done. So... The prep of the Devlin was pretty easy, all right? Stripping the body, fixing any dents, chips, cracks, or whatever was going on with the wood that was underneath the finish due to just, you know, use. You know, not being abused or anything, but just the use of a guitar. It's an old guitar, you know, it's going to have some cosmetic issues with it. Fixing those issues, applying a primer coat to the body, actually to the whole guitar and starting from there as a fresh canvas wet sanding with 800 grit sandpaper the primer that way it gives the um, next layers of paint something to bite into you know when you're wet sanding you're scratching the surface of whatever is on that surface and you're able to apply a coat of paint on there to where it's going to bite into the paint and it's going to end up adhering itself to where you don't have any issues. Unlike with lacquer, unless you have dust in the finish or dust in the paint or something like that, uh, you really don't have to do any wet sanding because lacquer will melt into each other and works out pretty good. This stuff here is, what did I say this was? This was a... Um, uh, polyurethane this is spray max and this is part of the pearl white system now this is the liquid pearl and this you spray on top of the pearl white and it just gives a little bit more of an enhancement of the pearl that you just sprayed on there this has a little bit of a different type of pearl mixed into a matte finish this is not a clear coat this is not a finished coat or anything else so you still have to put a clear or some type, a type of a clear on top of this in order for it to uh, adhere and work properly. So the problem with this is, as I sprayed the white pearl on there, now I'm talking about this time around, all right? The first time around, I just didn't like the way the striping came out. It wasn't as sharp as I wanted it, and it peeled a little bit when I moved, when I removed the uh, striping tape. So. What's going on with this? All right, so the pearl white was wet sanded with 800 grit sandpaper, and I ended up having a nice clean surface to apply the liquid pearl to it. Apply the liquid pearl. You don't use a lot of this, but you put enough of it under, and you have to be careful with this because if you don't spray it evenly, you end up with more uh, colored pearl. It comes out blotchy. Let's just put it to you that way. So when I ended up putting on this shit, let it dry, did my wet sanding, striped the body, and then sprayed the red. The red went on really nice, no problems, no issues, no nothing. S peeled off the masking tape, which is the vinyl tape that I use for striping because it's flexible. And all of a sudden, this shit peeled off the white. So the liquid pearl didn't adhere to the white pearl in order for it to uh, give me the look that I was looking for. Now, here's a problem. Got a hold of Spray Max, talked to their customer service, which are very nice people, and ended up just telling them what the issue was and the problem was, and it was like, well, that shouldn't have done that. And it's like, no, it shouldn't have done that. And told them what I went through as far as each step goes the process because they want to know if you kind of know what you're doing 
you know, this way is like, well, it's your fault. You fucked up. You're the one who's going to eat the cost of this. Luckily, Spraymax is eating the cost of the next system that they're sending me of the Pearl White. Well, they're going to send me this as well. This I'm probably not going to use. I've got enough of it. So they're sending me new paint. Right now, I use the remainder of the Pearl White on the Devlin, which is kind of a... Um, maybe a good thing because I, the first time I stripped it down, I stripped it down to the primer. Okay, reprimed it because if you go through the primer, you should reprime it in order to, to cover up certain spots and stuff like that. If you sanded through it, reprimed it, wet sanded that, hit it with the white. So I, each time I started, I started pretty much with a fresh canvas. This time around, I sanded it down to basically. Um, where I really thinned out the white pearl, all right? In some areas, I kind of went through the pearl, but, you know, whatever. That's what primer is for. So what I ended up doing is respraying the primer, or respraying the white pearl, and I ran out of white pearl. So when I got a hold of Spray Max and kind of bitched to them about their product as far as this liquid pearl not doing what it's supposed to be doing as far as adhering to the pearl white, um, they're sending me out another system of this shit. So now I just have to wait for that. Now, right now, the Devlin is sitting in the other room, and it has a nice coat of white pearl on it, and just waiting for the next can so I can finish the white pearl. I'm not going to add this stuff to it. It still has a pearl effect to it. It looks like, like my father's vehicle, his Buick. It's white pearl, all right? It's white pearl without this. And that's what it looks like right now. So what I'm going to end up doing is just throwing this, this shit away. This is like really no good. And I've got a couple of cans of this because of each time when I end up working on the Devlin, I end up getting new materials to do so. So I'm working on something else now. I have one project as a special project that I'm working on, and all I'm going to show you is a gold three-way switch. That project is something that's special, and it's going to be uh, a later on thing, okay? But right now, since I'm waiting for one thing to kind of cure itself up and waiting for more materials to do so, I am working on something else. So I don't know if you remember this body or not, but this is the guitar that I picked up that uh, ended up having the um, the vine and the neck with the bird inlays on it, all right? Now, as you can see, this body is pretty thin. All right, so I ended up doing a number with this where I shaped the body. And how I shaped the body was basically just using a DA sander. And it's knowing how to use the DA sander to where you get real nice sharp lines, like you see on the edges over here, getting a little bit of a belly cut, and giving it an arch top somewhat, and rounding off, as you can kind of see I rounded this off a little bit, so it's not a flat surface anymore. This body really wasn't um, a real flat surface to begin with but now it has a little bit more character in it and it's nice and even when you rub your hands over it the same areas like over here has a slight dip to it there's an arch going over the top it's flat here and arched here which is the way it's supposed to be otherwise when you put your pickup rings on here they're not going to sit flat they're going to look funny so i didn't thin out the top over here but just the sides and the same thing with the back so the strength is still here, and I didn't thin it out to where the washers that go in here will be sticking up either, unlike some people. <laughs> so gave this thing some nice shape to it. Now the next step is applying this to the top and getting it to where it sucks on there and doesn't give me a problem where it splits or anything. So. There's a way of doing this, and I'm going to be using, in some areas, I'll be using some tape, which is for veneering, all right? And what this is going to help me do is if I put a strip across the bottom over here, 
if I put a strip across the top over here, maybe a strip across over here. This area here I really don't think I have to worry about because there's not too many bends in it. And this does, really doesn't feel like it's going to create an issue and it feels like it's going to follow the body, but I just don't want it to split in different areas when I do the cold pressing of this. So this is what's going on there. Now I also ordered some stuff that's going to go on this as well. Now I'm not too sure of the color that I'm going to go with of the body. I'm thinking maybe uh, a green going into a blue, light green going into a blue because I want more of the uh, quilting to show on this thing than anything else. But I picked up a couple of these kits which kind of mimic these kind of mimic the vine that is on the neck, all right? Pretty damn close to it without the birch. So then I picked up, these are inlays, which are bird inlays. And I picked up a couple of these. And what I'm gonna do, they're perloid. The bigger ones are perloid. And I'm just gonna put them in random spots, kind of like how, how the neck is looks as far as, so it's gonna have like the vine going around the edges over here with a couple of birds around it. Nothing really, really fancy, like on this side here, maybe I'll make go around the side over here, because I did order two of these kits. And hopefully they work out pretty good to where I, it looks like I'll have more because there looks like it, maybe there's another sheet. I think there was just one sheet or two sheets. I gotta check that out. But that's what I'm gonna go with as far as what's on top. And I'm gonna clear coat this thing afterwards, locking all this in so it doesn't create any type of any issues or problems or anything like that to where it's gonna peel off. So that'll match the neck as far as the body goes. And the headstock, I'm going to reshape it like I reshaped the body. And I'm going to work. Now, even though this was a, even though this is kind of like a no-name guitar body and neck, the neck is in really good condition as far as uh, how it is. But I am going to refinish it and I am going to refret it. But as far as the build quality of the neck, now I've kind of, looked at it and did some things with it and stuff and and truss rod works the way it's supposed to be it's a two-way truss rod um the fretboard is a rosewood fretboard with a maple neck it does have a scarf drawing on there but a lot of guitars do so the neck itself is just a basic neck the body well it's this body had a see-through finish on there and you can kind of see why with the way that this looks but if they would have moved this stripe, the center piece of wood over just a little bit more, I would have probably just did another transparent, I probably would have stained this a color, sanded it down to get my rings, or even hit it with a torch to kind of highlight these rings, and then ended up just putting a transparent uh, paint over it, just to give it, you know, kind of like a look. But since this is over this side more than this side, um, and then these two pieces of wood really don't match, which I, this is a, uh, a mahogany, I believe. This looks like a mahogany, but I'm not too sure about this. And it even feels a little bit different, too. This one feels a little bit more rough. This one feels a little bit more softer. But there are some remnants of the same way it looks on it. A union here, just different colors. So, yeah. Reshape the body. Reshape the headstock. Apply the veneer probably going with a green to a fade, blue fade and then I'm going to put my vine on here and end up doing the birds inlays on here and sealing that in with a clear coat. So that's what this is going to be like. This is what the project is I'm working on now until I receive the paint from Spray Max. And I can work on that little devil. Right, you guys take it easy. Have a good one. This is going to be the next project that I'm working on and Take care.